Hello viewers, my name is Pranav Devan. Welcome and to join me at Ceasefire's Advanced Intelligence Center. Today I have got you a demonstration of the Ceasefire's total flooding system with HFC 227EA. Let's look at our arrangement over here. We have got a 1.1 meter cubic meter enclosure where we have fitted a nozzle on top and then we have two detectors on the ceiling of this enclosure which are attached to two zones, two separate zones. Now, the heart of the whole system is our GRP or our gas release panel. On this gas release panel, let me show you the inside of the gas release panel. We have a manual release on the gas release panel, a watch switch which is connected to this panel, two backup batteries, and then we have a keypad which can control this panel and it also has your coding on it. On this panel we can look at the fire situation, fault, discharge and other kinds of indication which can be useful in the time of fire. Now the GRP is also connected to an um, electromechanical release which is connected to the head of the valve of the cylinder in which the gas is stored. The pressure of this gas is also noted and is indicated by this PGS or pressure gauge switch. If there is 10% drop in pressure, then the switch will give a low pressure indication onto the GRP or a gas release panel. Now, the ways in this system can work is that you can have electro, uh, you, have, you can have a mechanical release where you do not require any electricity. All you have to do is remove the safety pin after breaking the safety seal and downing this lever which could be an arrangement of pulleys and pull lever. On the other hand, electrically we can also actuate this system by our electromechanical release. If we come over here, I will show this system to you. Say you detect a fire and your automated system has not functioned at present. So I can do a manual release. A countdown starts on the GRP. After 10 seconds it will release. I can also press a abort and I can pause this system. So at present if it is an automatic release or a manual release. Let me silence this system first. So, if it's a uh, your manual release or it is automatic release, the system can be aborted, and that has to be done within your delay time. In our case, it was 10 seconds. I aborted the system. Now I can reset the system, and we can uh, see how after 10 seconds the electro uh, mechanical release uh, comes out with a spin, and it actuates the system. So. Let me reset it first. The system has been reset. So after abort the system has to be reset before it can function again. So again I am going to do uh, electric release from the panel. The countdown begins. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the pin has come out and this would have actuated the valve and the gas would have been released within the chamber. So let's look at the demonstration of this system with actual fuel. Okay viewers, for the purpose of the demonstration, I am going to place four cups within this enclosure. The enclosure size is about 1.1 cubic meter as I said before. I am going to use 600 grams of gas which is going to be discharged by an electromechanical release when both the zones get activated. So this is what's going to happen or what you can observe is that one of the detectors is going to get activated at one time and that means one zone, if any one detector in many one zone gets activated that means you get, you get an alarm. So our strobe siren will light up over here. Strobe sirens are usually 
a lot of help when we are uh, trying to help people with uh, hearing impairment or people who won't be able to hear the alarm for some reason or the other. Maybe they have mufflers on their ears. So a strobe light indicates an uh, emergency. Now, when both the zone gets activated, it is, it is only then that the gas release panel is going to go into a countdown. After the countdown is finished, as I, as I had shown you earlier, the electromechanical release will uh, set out a spin and discharge this gas. Once the gas has started or it has, uh, the flow has started for the gas, it will not stop till all the gas has been released. So uh, let's go ahead and look at this demonstration. So first let's put in the cuts. So let's put these cuts in four corners, a little further in, yes, very good. Okay, so we have our cups in place. So uh, let's light the fire. So as uh, the smoke rises, we should see one, any one of these zones getting activated first. System is ready. So the GRP has its own battery inside, which will uh, help to function it in case of a power failure. It can also indicate that you know, uh, in case there's a power failure, it will give that kind of indication too. Uh, it's a commercial panel which can be linked to any addressable panel. So we have activation of one of the zones. So we have an alarm. We have one zone activation. We are waiting for the second zone has activated now. Both the zones are active. So this countdown is ready. Three, two, one, zero. And that's the discharge. So let me silence the alarm first and then I'll talk a little more. So as you see, HCFC discharges do not leave quite a lot of residue. They are very good for server rooms and sens uh, sensitive areas where residue can harm the equipment. Uh, visibility is pretty good. Uh, we can, I can see the back of the enclosure from here. And slowly and steadily as the suit settles down, uh, we'll have more clarity inside, uh, more visibility inside. So as I was telling you, this is a commercial panel which will be uh, able to be uh, connected to a addressable panel via an input module. Uh, this has 500 event log memory which can be seen uh, on the panel itself. So viewers, I hope you like the demonstration and that's all from my end at the Air Center.